So I wanted to make a video to talk about the terms CI, CD. You've probably heard these terms before, but let's just go ahead and talk about what they are and why you should be using them on your team at work or in your personal projects. So CI stands for continuous integration. Um, and I can't spell, so let's just go ahead and correct that. And the CD stands for continuous deployment. Okay, now if you were to guess, what does continuous integration means? Well, it means you're integrating your code with other people as often as possible. Now this could be multiple times a day, maybe it's just like once a day. But the reason this term was created was because sometimes we have long lived feature branches that may be out there for weeks, maybe even months, right? Really complex features. And this terminology was added so that we can actually get these changes that people are working on integrated with other people on your team. So I'm going to go ahead and just like add um, some people here. So imagine you have a team with like four developers, right? So you got Bob, you got Cody, you got Rick, you got James, right? And they're all off working by themselves, you know, working on their features or fixing their bugs. And this is great, right? They're basically, you know, working on some code and they get that code eventually done and they make a pull request for it. But depending on how big that feature is, they could go days, weeks, sometimes even if it's a huge feature or a huge refactoring that touches a lot of the system, maybe it's even like a month or two. And this can cause issues because when Bob is done with his code, and he makes a pull request, maybe it's going to have a bunch of conflicts or issues with the design that Cody was taking for his feature or the bug fix, right? And then along the ways, you could have James who's also working on his own thing. And if it takes weeks or months to have all these features integrate together, you have a higher chance that the designs that these individual developers are doing aren't going to mesh well together. Okay, so continuous integration, this was a term deemed for basically having people merge as often as possible to a centralized branch, whether that's like your main branch or development branch, it doesn't really matter as long as your code, which you can use like feature flags to have your code added to the actual code base, so that not only can your code be integrated with everyone else's code, but people can start seeing it and playing with it. And they can hopefully find issues along the way with your code. Now, obviously, if you're doing a huge sweeping refactoring, sometimes you can't just integrate your refactoring in. Sometimes you need like this big, bold deployment where you have like, you know, hundreds of file changes that you have to deploy at once. But for most other features and bugs, if you can get this stuff, even if it's like you did some work throughout the day, and you can feature flag it or add behind some type of switch to turn it off so other developers aren't impacted by it. Uh, maybe you write some tests along the way that during that day, you can continuously integrate this stuff with other developers and it's supposed to reduce the risk of the code finally getting deployed out. So that's an overview of the integration part. Let's move on to the continuous deployment because that's also very important to understand. So once you actually have your pull request and people review it and you merge it into a main branch, the term continuous deployment, it basically means like this stuff gets deployed out to production. Your users in production can then start using it. And of course you could have this behind a feature flag or some type of canary deployment, a slow release. But the point is that your stuff is always getting deployed out somewhere and real users are playing with it. And also the point is to do this multiple times. Some projects and teams can actually do this multiple times a day. Like you could have multiple deployments going to production all throughout the day. And you need to build a, re a system that's resilient enough to allow that many deployments. It doesn't have downtime and can seamlessly upgrade users to new versions when you get that stuff deployed out. So a lot of people say that this is like the gold standard of software engineering, right? You should be able to make a change, get it deployed out, whether it's like a big change or a minor change, and your team should be working together to get that stuff deployed out to your production uh, users. Now I've been on teams where this is the goal, but sometimes it's just hard to reach this goal, right? Sometimes it takes weeks. Sometimes you have a deployment schedule where you have a, a team that's like, hey, we're going to deploy on a certain day every week. And that's just how it is, right? Sometimes it's, we do one deployment a month. And I think the main issue, if you're not on like a smaller team, a lot of software used to do deployments like once or twice a year. In fact, I think my dad worked at a company where they would do one release uh, every year. And this was more common when you had like, a, you know, an actual like a disc or a CD or a hard drive, you had to send your clients so they can install the software and you need to make sure it's all, you know, perfectly created and tested before you can actually send it out to them. When it comes to web development, you have this flexibility where 
even if you ship a bug, you can quickly turn around and fix that bug, right? So it's a different ecosystem than like shipping to actual physical devices or software that's, you know, living on uh, embedded systems. That probably requires a lot more strenuous testing and to make sure everything's good. And again, often you can't just continuously deploy code updates to these devices, right? It's, it's a little bit more challenging. Sometimes users have to manually click an upgrade button, which they could take years to do. So this is more like geared towards, I think, web development, where you have this flexibility to quickly ship a, a patch or ship a feature and all your users can start using it. Um, now, in terms of achieving both of these, because, you know, reading terminology is always easier than actually implementing it. Continuous integration and continuous deployment is typically done with a pipeline. So a CI, CD pipeline is typically what people call it. And there's various ways that you can achieve this, right? So you can use GitHub Actions, which is a main one that I've been using a lot on my side projects and at work. There's also Circle CI. There's Travis CI. I'm most of these code build tools have some type of pipeline built into it. So like Railway has a way to hook into your repo and then you can hook in a script or run a custom build script when you push changes to your branch. I'm sure Vercel has something related to this where you can like easily hook in your own builds. But the point is in order to achieve this type of flexibility, you typically have to add a bunch of tests because if you're deploying to production multiple times a day, you need to make sure that the code you're shipping doesn't have bugs. And often you don't have a, a, a testing team who's there to check your code multiple times a day to make sure it's good. So the way that you achieve continuous integration and continuous deployment is by using lots of tests. So tests become very important and there's different types of tests. So you could have like unit tests, you can have integration tests, you could have end to end tests, you could have smoke tests, you can have uh, performance tests. Um, basically you have these set of things that run over your code. Sometimes they'll just, you know, run a little unit test over a function and make sure it, you know, returns the right outputs given some certain criteria or inputs. You have integration tests that may test a larger swath of things connected together. You might have end to end tests where you actually spin up a UI inside of your GitHub action. You spin up a database, you spin up your backend APIs, you spin up some additional things like a, maybe like a redis queue and you actually test by clicking through the ui to make sure that like hey when i click this button does it actually save the user and is that user stored in my cache system so that when i do the request again it's a super fast request the the bigger the test you write i would say the more valuable they are but the harder they are to maintain so you have to be very careful with like cypress tests or playwright tests because if you write them poorly Sometimes you'll see these things randomly fail in GitHub Actions and you spend like the whole day trying to debug why. But uh, we are doing a huge refactoring on our code right now where we're moving all of our data from one database to a different type. We're going from a NoSQL database in Dynamo to a SQL database in Postgres. And often I would say that these end-to-end -end tests in Cypress have been our saving grace because you can make these huge refactorings over hundreds of files and you run the end-to-end -end tests and they all turn green. You have pretty strong confidence that, hey, your stuff is working the way you think it is, okay? Now there's other ways that you can kind of improve the quality of your code when you're doing like a CI CD pipeline. You can also do like, you know, checks for lint. You can do a sneak performance test or security testing, security checks, uh, linters to make sure everyone has the proper formatting. Um, you can do pre-commits as well. So when, before someone actually commits their code, you could just go ahead and auto format it or like make sure that it's matching certain criteria. You could have checks that verify that you don't have more TypeScript errors that are popping up when people commit code. But these are the main ways I've seen this done. Now, additionally, in order to have this stuff all work, like when it comes to a deployment and continuous deployment, you have to have literally no manual interaction with your deployment process to achieve this. So literally you kick off a GitHub action and it just deploys everything, regardless of how big or small your system is, Everything should just automatically update behind the scenes, uh, whether using Kubernetes or some type of managed, data, uh, managed host. And there should not be a single developer who has to go and configure things or you know, restart systems or do any type of manual process, right? To achieve continuous deployment, everything has to be fully automated through bash scripting. Um, we're gonna just go ahead and say like how to achieve CD. And I would say typically that's done through full automation of deployments. 
And often the only way to achieve this is by using something like a bunch of infrastructure as code. So there's like Terraform, there's Pulumi, there's SST. Basically you write a bunch of code and so that when you need to spin up a new database in AWS or spin up a new EC2 instance that's configured with a certain like user data initialization script, you actually write the code for that so that when you get it merged in, Terraform or whatever will run over your code changes and automatically update your cloud providers to spin up the services that you need. Maybe you can hook them into Ansible or Puppet somehow. So they'll be managed by whatever your orchestration services are. If you want to use like ECS or some managed host as well, that is an option. But basically the way that you can achieve CD is all of your code has to be fully automated and comes when it comes to deployments. And the way you can achieve that is by using infrastructure as code. Typically, you can also do like a bunch of bash scripting or just use like a, a managed service such as like Vercel that basically automatically, you know, does all the deployment for you if you're using like Next.js or whatever other frameworks that are kind of easy to get deployed out. But there's also nuance to this, right? You have users who are using your system and you, if you just go out and deploy like a new API version change, you want to make sure you're not breaking that for your users who are currently using your application, right? You could have hundreds of people who have their app open. And if you deploy a new change that breaks an interface, when your user tries to click a submit button, it's going to break on their UI, right? So you have to be more cognizant of backwards compatibility changes. Like if you're going to change an API, you should probably version it. If you're going to change something with your database schema, you should probably do some type of expand contract process so you don't have a bunch of downtime and there's also stuff like blue green deployments uh, where you can actually deploy a brand new version to like a blue environment and then you can transition all your active users from your old environment to your new environment um, and then eventually you'll kind of tear down the old environment right so you can have like this seamless deployment process but to actually achieve this is hard right it's not something you just easily do there's like something called like version drift when you deploy a new version of your ui it doesn't necessarily mean that your users are going to use it, right? They have to manually refresh. Typically, your UIs are hosted behind, you know, CDNs, so they may get old versions of your UI. But then you have to orchestrate some type of, like, messaging system to force them to update or give them the option to update. I don't know if you've seen that when you use a UI and it's like, hey, there's a new version, click here, and it basically just, like, refreshes the whole page. So achieving that type of stuff, like, it does take a lot of additional engineering to, like, get it done right. Um, but that is the goal, in my opinion. Like, if you have a good software process where you can get a quick little fix or a bug fix deployed out there within like five or 10 minutes, granted, the larger your project, the more tests you're going to have to run, right? Um, and so, I mean, even our project at work is like half a million lines of code. We have like thousands of unit tests, we have like hundreds of end to end tests, and hundreds, hundreds, if not even close to thousands of integration tests. These things take a lot of time to run, right? So, even if like you find a bug and fix it in five minutes, like locally, it may take 20 to 30 minutes to get all this stuff deployed out to production because there's just so much additional stuff that has to run. And then when all the tests pass, you have to then start running Terraform, which has to go run through your code and compare it against AWS and figure out what it needs to change. And then finally it has to do like some type of blue green process to get your stuff deployed out there and your users have to switch over to the new versions. It's hard, right? And so I think this is something you should go and really focus on if you want to be a good, I don't know, I guess a DevOps engineer, just a good engineer in general, just understand these two terms and then like understand the nuances of how you can implement these and achieve these well with a large team. Some teams are huge, right? I, I kind of gave you an example with four developers, but I think there's another project that work where we have like 40 developers who have to work on a, a, a huge code base, right? And so if you have a bunch of different people all committing code every day sometimes it's just not possible right based on your clients or your stakeholders in the organization that you're working at maybe they're more risk adverse and there's always risk in doing a deployment and getting the stuff all set up perfectly with no issues whatsoever it's hard right it takes hard engineering and lots of time and lots of skill and so sometimes that's why we kind of resort to like you know let's just do like a deployment every month or every week or like at the end of the day at a certain time when the activity is low because it's just safer that way. And when you break production, like you always have to answer to somebody. Like someone's gonna be asking like, why did you do deployment at the peak hours during the day? Um, but that's the goal in my opinion. If you can get your system fully functional of like deploying new changes without any downtime or any um, adverse uh, performance in your system, I think that's the gold standard. So 
Anyway, I've been rambling for too long and I probably have like gone in circles repeating the same stuff. So go learn these terms and hopefully you can apply them to your project in some type of way. And leave a comment below if you are already doing this on your project at work or leave a comment if you think that continuous deployment is like this pie in the sky idea that in reality is just not really achievable, right? I think that's a valid argument as well. So leave a comment if you think that. Other than that, I guess leave a comment if there's another topic you want me to talk about. Um, I'm kind of out of ideas about what to make videos on, honestly. So leave a comment. I'd appreciate that. Have a good day and happy coding.